With a tragic past born to outlaw blood, a pistol on his hip, and Shakespeare on the tip of his tongue, Johnny Ringo may be the worst fascinating outlaw that history nearly forgot. Yet to this day, there's a long-standing and riveting mystery that surrounds his death. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today we examine Johnny Ringo, one of the Wild West's worst that you've probably never heard of. In Greens Fork, Indiana, Johnny Ringo was born on May the 3rd, 1850. While not much has been historically noted about the youth of Johnny Ringo, he's notably from outlaw stock. It's understood he was related to Jesse James' notorious bank robbing gang, the Younger Brothers. Born to Martin and Mary Ringo, John was one of five children in a family life far from outlaw. Yet even a normal home life didn't save Johnny Ringo from the danger and vulnerability of life on the frontier. In a tragic turn of events at just 14, John Ringo and his siblings witnessed their father's death. On the family trail from Missouri to California, Martin fired his gun on himself by accident during a stop on the road. The gunshot fired underneath Martin's eye and nearly beheaded him in an instant. Along with his siblings, the man who would become Johnny Ringo was left traumatized by this childhood tragedy. Whether the incident had any effect on his choices is unclear, but Ringo was already working on his gun handling and marksmanship at 14 years old. The brutal turn of circumstances had left the family burying Martin at the roadside and continuing on their journey. Arriving in California, the family settled in San Jose, California. John would remain with his brother and three sisters till he turned 20. In 1870, John Ringo traveled to Mason County, Texas, where he made acquaintances with cattle rustlers. Following his friendship with Scott Cooley, Johnny Ringo was on his way to becoming a famed black hat and gunslinger of the Old West. The geopolitics of Mason County, Texas at the time was markedly perilous. Much of the area and those around it were occupied and colonized by cattlemen of British and German descent. These two groups were at each other's throats continuously throwing accusations of theft and foul play. Tensions reached its breaking point in 1875. Tim Williamson and another British rancher were taken out of jail to be shot and killed by German ranchers, a decided act of revenge for the theft of their livestock. Scott Cooley was good friends with Williamson and took the murders hard and went out of his way to promise vengeance. Cooley's charge on the German ranchers began the Mason County War, also known as the Hoodoo War. The bloodshed began on August the 10th, 1875, with Scott Cooley murdering and scalping John Morley. Johnny Ringo came to develop his reputation through the Hoodoo War. He worked alongside Cooley and his men. This, in turn, led to allegiances and friendships. Following the death of Moses Baird by German cattlemen, Johnny Ringo led the charge in response. Come late September, Johnny Ringo and Bill Williams rode to James Cheney's home and shot him dead. They then rode over to the home of Dave Duell to bring him the same fate. Upon their arrival, Duell came to his door armed with a gun, and both Williams and Ringo skipped town. Though they had bragged publicly about killing Cheney, no arrest warrants were issued for Williams and Ringo. It wouldn't be till December when Johnny Ringo was jailed twice. Firing a pistol in the center of Burnett earned a disturbing the peace charge for his first arrest. He was soon out again after a $150 bond was posted. His second arrest was of much greater consequence, earning him a jail stint in Austin to avoid any potential breakout from allies. Both Scott Cooley and Ringo were put behind bars for threatening the lives of the Burnett County Sheriff and Deputy. Though the Hoodoo War had wound down despite tensions residing, both Ringo and Cooley remained dangerous elements in the eyes of the law. Having stood trial and been sentenced in Lampasas County in 1876, both men appealed their sentences. This would have meant waiting a full year behind bars to hear their cases heard. Friends on the outside had other ideas and both men were broken out of prison months into their stay. Ringo went on to continue his outlaw life. Cooley, however, died within the month. Over the coming years, Ringo was paroling around Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico with several spells in and out of jail. His appetite for mayhem had hardly subsided over the years outside of imprisonment. Legend has it, Ringo shot one man for refusing a whiskey because the other man wanted to drink beer. Another account is Ringo holding up a poker game to steal the $500 held between the players. His most famous run-ins were ahead at Tombstone, Arizona in 1881. 
The much mythologized meeting of Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, and Johnny Ringo was as tense as has been recounted. A showdown in the streets shortly followed their first encounter, and only intervention stopped it from being murderous. While his myth would never have been more potent than his crossing paths with fellow legends, Johnny Ringo stood only a year away from his death. Johnny Ringo's death is shrouded in mystery to this day. There are different camps with conflicting opinions, but no one can say for sure. His body was found sitting against a tree in July 1882 outside Tombstone, Arizona. There were only two details available from the corpse, the gunshot in his head and the Colt 45 revolver in his hand. Officially, with not much more than this to run on, Johnny Ringo's death was ruled a suicide. Many believe to this day that it was no suicide and most likely Doc Holliday or Wyatt Earp. There is a story to these stories, however. With the release of the 1993 film Tombstone, a popular and well-received western, Doc Holliday kills Johnny Ringo in this fictionalized account. Historians believe the revenge killing of Johnny Ringo at the hands of Doc Holliday only gained steam thanks to the film. The actual historical record paints quite a different picture. Just a handful of days before his death, Doc Holliday was in court at Pueblo County in Colorado. This would have meant a 2,000 plus kilometer journey in under 72 hours. Now, Doc Holliday was one hell of an outlaw, but I doubt he could teleport. Wyatt Earp is another rifle with a grudge who is continuously accredited with killing Johnny Ringo, yet history more or less claims otherwise. Earp actually spread rumors himself that he was the man who'd done the deed, but this ultimately didn't hold up. The word-of-mouth campaign Earp began would have started around four months after Johnny Ringo's body was found. However, according to Earp's account, Johnny Ringo's body would not have been in the condition it was found in. Whether Earp came to learn this or not, he soon dropped the rumor and denied Ringo's death was his doing. Perhaps it's the romanticism of the Old West outlaw that keeps rumor alive, but Johnny Ringo's death was more likely a suicide than any other option. It's understood that he was depressed and heavily drinking, even by frontier outlaw standards, in the weeks leading up to his death. Though such claims are hard to know and verify the accuracy of, Johnny Ringo was portrayed as running from demons as much as the law. The only insight we have into Ringo's final days is an interview with the Tombstone Epitaph. Ringo was despondent in the interview, and he predicted his own demise. Maybe Johnny Ringo's death was a suicide, or maybe he knew something we never will. If there's something on Johnny Ringo and other famous outlaws of the frontier you'd like to hear, let us know in the comments section. Like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching Bizarre History. We'll see you next time.